This week, a long overdue update on the RV-12 and me. It's been a few months since I put out a video, and a few people have been asking me whether I've been doing very much flying. Well, the reality is I have been. Uh, back in about the end of May, I finally decided to begin uh, training for an IFR rating, which I've always had in the back of my mind, something that I've wanted to do, but I never really got around to it. I had no excuses this year. So I began flying with uh, Tom Kramer at the Sky Beckins Flight School that's based at Sky Manor. Um, I did a little bit of the flying at the beginning in my own aircraft, but as you probably know, my airplane is not equipped for instrument flight. So I pretty much had decided I was going to be doing most of the training and the final FAA check ride using one of Tom's uh, 172 Cessnas. Well, fortunately, uh, earlier this week, I was able to have the check ride finally with the FAA examiner. And uh, while it was a grueling day, I'm not used to taking tests, uh, I was successful. So I now have an IFR rating. But what I wanted to mostly talk about today was what I had been doing with my aircraft, my RV-12. As you know, it's not equipped for instrument flight. So what I had decided about halfway through my training is that it was worth investing a little bit into the panel and upgrading the aircraft so that I would be able to fly instrument approaches. Um, I decided to add a GPS navigator and a backup instrument and add a few little updates to the panel at the same time. I was unable to use the RV-12 for the check ride with the FAA. They demand uh, different types of approaches. I won't get into that. But I have finished the upgrades on the plane. I need a, a final pedostatic uh, inspection to make it legal to fly in, in weather conditions and in the system. But I'm very happy with the results. So I thought I'd share just in a few minutes the updates that I did and what I went through. So after a little bit of research, my plan of attack was to relocate the dyne on buttons and knobs from the upper middle section of the panel over to the lower right. I would then add a, a battery-powered attitude indicator just above those knobs, and that would give me room for a new IFR navigator in the middle of the panel. Compared to other aircraft, the RV-12 avionics shelf is fairly spacious and easily accessible. I needed to move around some existing hardware and wiring in order to facilitate the updates I was planning. The first item to arrive was the Dynon Backup Attitude Indicator. It has a built-in GPS and an AHARS unit, and it's rechargeable. It was pretty easy to attach to the panel with the existing hardware that they provided. Relocating the existing Dynon buttons and knobs was actually not too difficult. As you can see, I was able to remove the right side of the panel and work remotely installed a few nut plates and put the hardware all in place. It worked out really well. In order to connect the new Garmin navigator to my existing Skyview system, I needed to add a connection or an interface box called an AirInc. Before it arrived, I got to work though building a customized plate in order to mount it. I decided to put it on top of the glove compartment. Well, like a lot of things these days, my avionics were somewhat delayed in arriving, so I took the opportunity to add a few more enhancements to the panel. First, I added a, a new RAM mount below the left side of the panel, and I'm going to use that, hopefully, to mount my iPad in the future. I had to make a doubler plate, and uh, it worked out pretty well. I added in a, a fuel pump cutoff switch. I know that's a little controversial with the RV-12, but I figured I'd be running the panel on the ground without the engine running uh, periodically, and so I took that as an opportunity to add it. I also added an additional power plug on the right side of the panel. That way I could recharge items. It's a little bit more accessible for passengers as well. Central to all these updates is this GPS-175 navigator from Garmin. It's only about six and a quarter inches wide and about two inches tall. I clearly needed to cut open a hole for it and I began working on that before the item arrived. 
The plan was to put a cover plate on top of the opening so that the odd shaped holes from the dyna knobs would not be visible. I ordered most of the avionics and the wiring harnesses from Steinair, based in Minnesota. I'm really pleased with the work that they do and highly recommend them. They understand my uh, Skyview system and how the RV-12 is designed, so the cables that they sent me were just plug and play. Final thing I added inside the cabin was a go-around button that connects to the GPS unit, mostly for convenience, and I put that right below the autopilot disconnect button. I do need to add a placard for that. The GPS unit requires its own WAS antenna, and what I did was expanded the shelf where my existing GPS antenna is located in the engine compartment. I kind of made a, a customized shelf and painted it. I'm pretty happy with how it all turned out. Well, the only thing left was some final configurations to be set up, both on the Garmin unit and on my Skyview system. And after watching a few YouTube videos and a little bit of reading, it turned out to be very straightforward. I was kind of surprised how quickly I was able to get the system properly updated and functioning.